got a question that says, what are some elements of a successful blog post? Now, this is a great question because a lot of people write blog posts, they get zero comments, zero readers, and they wonder why. But they do the same thing over and over again and never get to the root cause. Now, I've been blogging every week for almost 12 years. Some of my posts have thousands of comments. And I kind of went back and looked at these posts and tried to identify the common patterns in popular posts. So I'd like to share a few of those with you today. Number one, make it relevant to your reader. What do I mean by that? Focus on what your audience wants to hear, not what you want to talk about. The classic example in personal finance is everybody was writing about savings rates and Roth IRAs. But what people really wanted to hear about was, hey, I got a cheap friend that never tips when we go out. What am I supposed to do about him? Write and meet your audience where they are, not always where you want them to be. Number two, make it practical. If you've struggled with a problem and found a unique way to solve it, that's infinitely helpful. One of the examples that we did, one of our most popular examples, was the briefcase technique. Now, the briefcase technique is something that I created years and years ago when I would go to interviews and I would pull out something theatrically from my bag and I would say, I actually you know, created this presentation for you and hand it over and they were just like, oh my God, you got the job. So I refined it, I tested it, and I created a little video on it and I gave it away. It turned out to be one of the most popular things we have ever done. That was a unique spin. You might have a unique spin on your own area. Think about how to name it, package it, and then deliver it to people and it will spread. Number three, make it personal. Don't write in corporate jargon. Write like you would send an email to a friend or better yet, write like you would talk to a friend at a bar. This is super classic and it is a super huge problem. People writing things like, today in our era of interesting internet corporate communication, it's very important to be cognizant and I'm just like, just kill me. I don't want to hear this shit. What I want to hear is a friend saying, look, dude, I totally get it. I went out last night. I had this crazy thing happen. I woke up in the morning. I was hungover. And then the first thing I thought was, I'm going to be late to work again. I can't afford it. How can I, how can I afford to be late to work? And now we talk about productivity solutions or whatever. That's completely different than saying, there are three key steps to being productive, right? I'm telling a story. Go look at these old magazines called Reader's Digest. Every single article starts with this great relatable story. This is how you want to talk. This is how you want to write. Like you would be talking to a friend at the back of a bar. And if you can do that, you will stand out from everybody else. Number four, make it engaging. Ask your readers to weigh in with their thoughts. Ask them to write you back. Comment and then showcase their answers. Make it a two-way communication. Don't just be blasting people all the time. This is something I do even to this day. We have hundreds of thousands of people on our email list and at the bottom of lots of emails, I say, hey, just write me back, tell me what you think. And I get a flood of emails and people think, oh my God, you're overwhelmed. Well, I actually love getting those emails and I love to be able to build a relationship with my readers. That is something that sets you apart from everybody else. If you can actually make it dynamic, and you can also take the comments you get and work them into future material. Completely different than somebody who just automatically set up a bunch of emails and went to the beach. Number five, be unique. Don't just rehash the same old recycled tactics that everyone else is saying. Be different. For example, I talked about personal finance in terms of psychology. I actually made fun of frugality zealots who said, you can't spend money on lattes or anything. I had a totally different approach. If you don't have something new to add to the conversation, then what are you doing? I actually believe that all of us have something new to add to the conversation. It could be an extreme level of practicality, like I went through and tested 25 cookbooks, this is what I learned. Or it could be someone new going through the process of a new skill. Me, Ramit, learning how to swim, I'm gonna take you through every single day. There's a million different ways to do it. But if it's just rehashing the same old stuff, you're sunk because there's a million other people who have already done it. Now listen, I get it. Some of these tips are easier than others. Some of these, you're like, okay, great Ramit, how do I apply this to my life? 
So I want to send you something. I created something called the ultimate guide to remarkable content. And it's exactly how we create material that is irresistible to read and it gets shared widely. Click the link below. I want to send you that PDF right now.